Welcome back. You're watching Stockwatch with me, Julieta Televi, and joining me to take your stock-related questions this evening are David Shapiro from Assessment Securities and Wayne McCurry from F&B Wealth and Investments. If you'd like to send questions, please SMS us 41392 or email us on stockwatch at bdtv.co.za. Wayne, David, good evening to you both. Um, David, I'm going to start with you tonight uh, because you're back on the show. You were traveling last week from New York. And not a bad day for the local market today, and it seems that emerging markets in general had a fairly good session. Um, the one interesting thing that happened in emerging markets today was that Indonesia uh, raised interest rates. Yeah. And I wonder um, uh, what, 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 if anything, you made of that. I've just learned the news now that they raised <laughs> rates. I didn't pick it up at all. I, I went through the market. It's, it's doing okay. You know, uh, the um, commodity shares recovered a little bit. Um, and right across the border was okay. Banks were slightly under pressure, property under pressure. But Julieta, we're in that very volatile environment at the moment where it's so difficult to read. There's still a lot of worries about inflation and the level of rates. I'm talking globally, which is weighing on us. Uh, we're hoping that, that results uh, from the big tech companies come and pull us out. And even if they do, I think it'll be short term. So until we get some movement from the Fed, and I'm talking about reducing rates, I'm afraid this volatility is going to continue and it's going to be hard to, to read through it. Yeah. I mean, when uh, last week we were saying uh, that th there are actually um, chances of an I interest rate increase this year. There's a 20% probability of that happening in the US, uh, which is a huge um, about turn from the end of last year when markets were, um, I suppose, fueled uh, by all talk of uh, six interest rate cuts this year in the US. Uh, you had our own Reserve Bank saying yesterday, no, no cuts until maybe next year, um, which is, do you think that's going to put quite a damper on any sort of consumer facing shares for, for the next while? Well, it'll put a damper on all shares, because essentially the share market is at the end of the day valued against interest rates. Yeah. In other words, earnings are discounted at interest rates and then some variation in a risk premium. I mean, it's all very theoretical, but over long periods, it actually does work. So this puts a damper on all shares, not just consumer shares. And it even puts more of a dampener on the expensive shares, the shares with very, very high ratings. So if that is the case and we get no cuts this year, and if interest rates go up, the share market's only doing one thing, both locally and overseas. And that one thing it's doing, it's not going up, it's going down. Mm. But I don't think that's going to be the case. But every person, from the Reserve Bank governor down to you and I, is data dependent. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, sadly. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of us are debt dependent as well. Um, and so it's, it's really terrible news if, if there's going to be no cut in interest rates, especially in South Africa. Um, you, you spoke about the, the tech shares, and there's a question from a viewer saying, I've watched AMD and Apple, uh, and I've seen these two stocks decline in price over the last six months, and wonder if I should just take my profits and put them in, in reserve for better days. Um, David. Uh, Apple worries me. You know, it's the one big uh, tech company that I haven't got a grip on because they're losing ground in China. There are all kinds of issues. They need to introduce their AI strategy. They need to, um, you know, um, I think they need to get phone sales up. I, it just seems to be bumbling along. I think every other company, I'm very happy with that. So from that point of view, I might be inclined to take profit. AMD, I like, I think down the line, uh, I've been watching the semiconductor industry very, very closely, and it is picking up off its low base. Um, the results are a little soggy, you know, this quarter, as we've seen. But I think uh, from now on, we're going to see demand. You know, this uh, this AI is real. You know, this is not play play stuff, and the spend is real. Yeah. So I think AMD, I would, I would probably. It's not my. You know, I'm still an Nvidia man. I'm still TSM and that, but. Uh, you know, AMD is, is, is still a good company, still a decent business. Mm. 
Well, I mean, looking at that chart, it hasn't been that poor. I mean, certainly no. over a year, <laughs> AMD is up. So, um, yeah. yeah, maybe, um, I, I don't know, Wayne, what do you think? Um, and, and also, would you take profits on Apple um, given that it's already declined as much as it has? Or would you just... Look, it actually hasn't declined that much in the broader scheme of things, to be honest. I mean, it's off an absolute record, yeah, record okay, high. Yeah. You know, so it hasn't actually fallen all, all, all that much. Look, I, I think maybe it's a... You know, shares don't just go up, unfortunately. And yet some people, the psychology is shares should just continue going up because they've done it in the past. Any share can fall at any stage. And given what the tech shares have done and what interest rates have done in America, you know, maybe there should be, a, I don't know, 10, 15 percent fall off. It doesn't alter the company. It doesn't alter the investment the, the, the profitability prospect of the company. It doesn't alter the investment case. It just means the share price has gone down because it's gone up so much. Mm. You know, so, you know, really, if, if you if you're panicking about Apple, I mean, I'm just having a look now. It's still up 2% in the last year. And the year to date, it's down nine. You know, mm. that's nothing in the broader scheme of things. And, you know, if a 9% is causing some concern and you want to sell and wait for better days, you know, maybe stock investment, share investment's not for you, eh? Yeah, or buying individual shares, uh, you know. No. Yeah. It, it, it's, you know, it's quite, yeah. No, you know, Wayne makes a point. I mean, these are very big businesses. They're solid. They've got so much money. You know, I mean, Apple can buy South Africa and you know, with a small change, that's how big it is and that's how much money it's got in the bank. I think we tend to be influenced by day-to-day -day movements or quarter-by-quarter -quarter movements and that. But I mean, if it's a good business, if it's got a good product, you know, good, decent management, it's still going to be around in the next five years selling its phone. You know, don't be influenced by the, by by short term uh, you know views. And and selling its applications as much as yeah. its hardware, yeah. um, which is where Apple's making yeah. huge amounts of money. I mean, this viewer, to his credit, he he does have an individual share portfolio because he sends us regular yeah. questions. So, um, so I'm I'm sure he has the stomach for it. Um, on, yeah. uh, and, and talking about having the stomach for it, what about gaming shares? We actually got a question on Monday um, asking us why we never discuss Southern Sun. We always talk about Sun International and City Lodge. But the question of this evening is what's behind uh, the gaming share drop, particularly Sun International? I'm confused by them in particular. Today's close was a three-month low. They were down 5.5%. The acquisition of Piermont is likely to go through. Their CEO was on BDTV saying their debt ratios would improve in months post the merger. So what gives? Wayne, what do you, what do you think is happening there? I really don't know. There's been no news that has come out. You know, the last set of results was quite good. So no, I don't know. I, I, I really, there's nothing that points to the share as to why it is going down. Yeah, it's, it's creeping up. I, you know, it, it, it goes up a bit, gives back a little bit, etc. But the direction is okay. And I mean, uh, the numbers that have come out from Sun International are, are are okay, are pointing in the right direction. There's no real threat to its uh, profitability. You know, as far I haven't got the numbers in front of me, the last set, but uh, it's it's doing pretty well. I, yeah, I don't know. You know, I don't know about gaming. Um, I mean, when we looked at, um, at 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 the other companies, you know. Uh, I don't know whether gaming's okay. I don't know whether we've really got the gamblers and, you know, other than the, I think the slot machines are doing all right, et cetera. But I don't think it's a massive theme anymore. I think it's it's been overshadowed by sports betting. You know, so, but you know, that, yeah. that, that, that to me is where the money's being made and, and um, you know, where, where money is being spent. But, but they've got, haven't they got uh, but they do. sports betting They've as got well? significant mm. sports betting I think and, it's, and mm. it was showing massive growth. Which And, and, and mm. when they came out with the cautionary, everyone expected them to, to do some deal in the, the online gaming or the mm. sports betting industry. So there was a bit of surprise that they'd gone for Piermont, you know, which is, yeah, old fashioned bricks and mortar, as I, you say, uh, gaming. Business. I don't know how big it is. I don't know how big sports betting is yet because I think it's it's fairly new. If I'm look, I'm not a sports better. You know, it's. Do uh, um, so you mean you don't put so any money? I, you didn't put any money on no, Arsenal last night. No, no. I, yeah. I always think they're going to lose. You know, and so. <laughs> what kind of a limp so, fan are you, David? 
The worst, the worst. You know, I think all Arsenal fans are like that. Low expectations. You know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, inexplicable Sun International uh, uh, to us at least. Um, then what about uh, Platinum? And uh, Wayne, I, I was seeing you uh, tweet quite a bit on, on Tesla's results and also demand for electric vehicles. And, and a viewer says, with the re reduced desire for silly electric cars, would we see more interest in Platinum and Rhodium in the future now with people preferring, again, their petrol machines or if not purely petrol machines, um, hybrid vehicles? What do you think? Yes. That's entirely correct. If hybrids are taking market share from electrics, which they seem to be doing, and if hybrids have a resurgence in sales, they actually use as much, if not more, PGMs than a standard car. So, yeah, definitely. I mean, Tesla, you know, they announced they're bringing out the cheap cars, and the cheap cars are coming sooner than expected. The share up 11%, but it's been pounded, you know, for a long time now. On the back of, you know, two years ago, three years ago, there was no competition in this game. Now, every person who makes a motor car is bringing out an electric car, and they're bringing out cheaper cars. And Tesla's facing serious competition from other battery electric cars. And they seen this overall sales growth in electric cars slow down. I mean, their revenue was down. Mm. Was it six or nine percent this last quarter? That's a big fall. There. Mm. You know, for your revenue to shrink that yeah. much, it's a big, big fall. Yeah. And they've really, got to change the business model and they've got to bring out cheaper cars that can that can compete with the other cheap cars. I had we had a very good presentation yesterday from a analyst at UBS, you know, who's a motor expert and he loves motor car. He's German. So he says, you know, if you're going to drive on the, the autobahns at 200 k's an hour, you're going to look for performance and you want a good car. He says, but if not, he says, you just want to go from A to B. He says, don't write off the Chinese electric vehicles. Now, this is a German, you know, who's very proud of his heritage and the manufacturing there. He says they have, they have European engineering and he says they are very, very good. You know, and he says, particularly for people who want to go from A to B. But the other point that he did make, he says, don't buy a company uh, on purely on an EV strategy. Buy it where EV is part of it. In other words, he, exactly what Wayne is saying now, you know, concurring with him, that um, uh, internal combustion engines are still going to be around for a long time. So um, it's, it's, you know, just it's going to be a lot slower the take-up of electric vehicles than, than we've anticipated. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's so many factors to weigh up considering uh, yeah. PGM investments. So I suppose both, I mean, this encompasses both PGM investments mm -hmm. and also investing in which, which car company do you pick? Because if you'd yeah. picked Toyota, for example, you'd have made a lot more money than if you'd picked Tesla, uh, which is quite, and Toyota has got kind of the hybrid car uh, tech yeah. uh, down pat. Um, uh, uh, David, just your thoughts on PGMs. Um, back to the viewers' question. Well, I, it, I, it's, it hasn't been performing well. <laughs> Every time we think it's going to turn around, and we start to see platinum go up, they go down. You know, and and palladium's back below or around about a thousand. Platinum's below a thousand again, and it just it it just doesn't seem to be finding any kind of support and picking up from there. So, it's it's difficult to read. You know, and and I'm just hoping one day we wake up and it suddenly shot through the roof again. But it's 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 very hard to pick it up from where we are. And the platinum producers themselves are negative. You yeah. know, they're not showing us uh, the way and showing any kind of confidence. So um, just just watch. You know, I don't, I don't know what's holding it back. But but the point that we're making is that uh, EVs are not the threat. Yeah. Okay. You know, they're not the threat to the platinum price. Yeah. Okay, just keeping with the resources theme, uh, a viewer says, I'm a young investor, back with another question for the stock fathers. I have a portfolio, <laughs> um, he says six mining. So I, I don't know if he means six mining shares, uh, uh, and I'm really enjoying the rise as to date. I'd like to ask the gentleman on their opinion on copper and gold prices. Um, can we expect higher prices over the next one, two years, given uh, that we are at the bottom of a commodity cycle? Wayne, specifically on gold and copper, where do you think they would be headed? Yeah, well, well, gold is not a commodity. Gold is something that I don't understand. It's in our psychology, it's money, it's 
it's not a commodity that's subject to normal demand and supply. Uh, copper is very, very different. The outlook for copper on a three to five to an even longer basis is astonishingly good. Because no matter whether we go electric battery or electric hybrid or power panels on your roof and solar energy, the demand for copper is only going to go up and up. And there haven't been many new discoveries. So I'm very bullish longer term on copper. Mm. <laughs> doesn't mean it turns this year. doesn't mean it turns next week. But on a three, five year basis, it's I'm very positive. Yeah. You know, Juliet, uh, two, com two copper companies, I mean, in the last two days, um, Orion came out with yeah. some numbers, were very good. And this is the old O'Keep mine, you know, which I think yeah. we've all dispatched to the junk heap, you know, for those of us who have been around a long time. The name is very common, you know, we know it, etc. And it's never really given us anything. But I think perhaps there might be something uh, coming out of it. I think the numbers were good. And then uh, Copper 360 today as well, you know, um, also uh, their, their production, they finally started to produce um mr nelson uh, what's it young nelson, young nelson is, yeah. Is, yeah is ultra bullish on the prospects for it and starts to see you know this is the start of south africa becoming a major cop okay <laughs> fine you know i yeah, love but... bullish talk maybe there's something there i don't know at least he's pulling copper out and and making it so i think if you like it and, you, and you're a bit of a punter have a look at these two yeah you know, i can't this is not an endorsement this is merely Go, go, uh, you know, the, I, I'm looking at the headlines. That's about as far as deep as I went into the company. <laughs> but uh, um, just just have a look. There might be something worth looking at. Well, I mean, yeah. we, we have another viewer. I'm sorry, Wayne. I, I just want to mention his question because it links to Orion Minerals. He said, considering the spectacular high-grade copper intercept and the current copper price being about $9,900 a tonne, together with the use and demand for copper, would the panel consider Orion a buy? There is talk that copper could reach $12,000 a tonne. I understand the risk with junior miners. So your thoughts would be appreciated. So, David, we've had your thoughts. Um, Wayne, do you think it's worth a flutter? Uh, um... Yeah, look, I mean, all the big all the big mining companies have got huge copper exposure. Anglo-Americans got massive copper exposure. I'm always worried about startups. And I mean, just a comment, and maybe I'm just grumpy, grumpy old man here, but <laughs> you've got to watch out for these companies that every time you open your sends, there's three announcements yeah. from each of these companies yeah. of how great and how fantastic things are. They must just be careful. They could be doing a little bit of overselling here. So when you open up, you literally you open up your, your, your sends and there's some announcement about something fantastic. And the one from Orion, I mean, you had to be a qualified geologist with 30 years experience to actually understand what they were telling you there. Yeah. And then today on Copper I'm 360, going to get Franco Lorenzoni on to you. Franco is yeah. the Orion man in South Africa. So yeah. He's you know, when, you, when, when you read the Copper 361, you, how many brilliant, fantastic, unbelievable, yeah. fantastic, yeah. earth-shattering <laughs> statements, you know, they must just be a little bit careful of overselling you. Yeah. yeah. I, I really feel for them because you've, they've also got to generate interest because they are startups uh -huh. and they do want to invest the capital. And I find myself being a complete sucker for, for shares like a copper 360, um, but that's my weakness. So um, <laughs> I would advise against uh, um, doing what I do. Um, just moving on, uh, viewer says, is 20% of pure South African shares in your portfolio too much? 30% uh, if you include cash deposits. What do you think? Well, I don't think you can include cash deposits. I don't think that that's right. Uh, it's not a share. It's a South African exposure. It's a RAND exposure, but it's not a share. 20% is roughly equal to what the weighting is of purely South African shares in the JSE. So I don't think you massively overexpose that 20% mm. at all. No, I think you've got to find the right quality there. You know, I've, 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 I've never been influenced by percentages. I've been influenced by the quality of the businesses. And I'm struggling at the moment. You know, it's not easy to, to look at it. If you look at the retailers, um, if you look at the banks, and I'm surprised at the banks. Uh, banks have been absolutely hammered. They're down 15, 20%, and I'm not quite sure why, you know, reason. The results are good, the dividend yields are good, and yet there just seems to be something that are, that's bothering uh, investors there. 
Um, they're not showing any kind of form. So I think, I think just you know, do your research. Be very happy. You know, be very content or uh, satisfied with what you what you see and where the, these businesses are going. Yeah. But um, it hasn't been easy to put together that 20%. Yeah. Okay. I'm so sorry. I, there's a whole bunch of questions that I completely didn't see that came through this morning. Um, so, uh, ooh, oops. Um, so let me try and rush through a few before we get to stock picks. Uh, a viewer says, Wayne always mentions that bad news peaks the day before the stock goes up. Can the fundamental <laughs> news and sentiment get any worse on Sassel? Or are there just way too many structural issues at risk? Well, entirely correct. It cannot get any worse. And if it cannot get any worse, then it might not get any worse. and might get better, but you never know where the bottom is at. That you can only judge with hindsight. Yeah, well, the news hasn't been good there. You know, just it's always a surprise on the downside. It's never a surprise on the upside. So I think, as Wayne said, just wait. You don't have to rush in and try and call that bottom. Uh, that's my point with that 20 percent just leave it you know and unless you're absolutely certain and confident that things are turning for the better just leave it you, know? you can't have hope and prayer is not good for the markets yeah you know okay mm -hmm. uh, and then i'd like the panel's thoughts on the below the top three weighted shares on the satrix top 40 are nasbass first rand and goldfields accounting for 23 percent of the portfolio well, the top three weighted shares on the JSE Global Equity ETF are Richemont, Bat, and BHP. Um, the panel's view on the above, and if there's a preference between the two, uh, given the weightings, would you have a preference? Is that maybe too complicated a question that I've left for yeah. too late in the show? <laughs> yeah, look, look, that's just the, because of that. This international companies is in the one index and not in the other index. Mm. So it depends on what you want. Hmm. Yeah, I've got no strong views. Okay. And then very quickly, um, a question on Quilter and 91. Operationally, Quilter and 91, are they similar? Uh, why is 91 <laughs> rated better than Quilter? And has the outlook changed with the recent uh, assets under management announcement by Quilter? Who'd like to take I think that? Wayne addressed that. Yeah, Wayne addressed it a couple of weeks ago and uh, had a very good answer. I hope he can recall it. You know, we yeah. all get old. Can't remember what yeah. we said. <laughs> Look, Quilter had a good good AUM update, but 91's got a longer and better track record. Okay. Um, all right. I shall I leave it there. Also, actually. different selling organisations. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. So you've got 40 seconds for your stock picks uh, between you, uh, Wayne. What's yours? Yeah, nice pass. <laughs> okay. I'm going for a company called ASM, not ASML. ASM, who came out with numbers today, and they're just pointing to uh, really a big turnaround still in the semiconductors. So look at it. They were joined at the hip at one stage, so don't get confused. Okay. Both good companies. And, and sorry, Wayne, why, why, why nice pass at the moment? <laughs> Okay, I was just making a brief to give Shapiro <laughs> yes. more time because he, he normally waffles more than what I do. Uh, uh, Ten cent looks good. Chinese tech yeah. was just too cheap. Ten cent has come up with a new game. The price is really nice. Pass and process are really on the back of that, and I think there's more upside to Chinese tech. You know, a couple of weeks ago we spoke about Chinese tech just being too bombed out, and now we're seeing there is some recovery in Chinese tech. Maybe the government's backing off a little bit. As I also said, they've got a new game out. I mean, I certainly don't play any games or do any gaming, but apparently it's a good game. So, yeah. Okay. We have that's to leave your, that's it there. Fault, Julia, you, know, you see, that's your fault. Yeah, no, <laughs> I'm sorry. I've mismanaged time horrendously. David Wayne, thanks very much for joining us this evening. <laughs> David Shapiro is from Sassman Securities. Wayne McCoy from F&B Wealth and Investments. <laughs>